This is Brian Schwartz from the University of California, San Francisco. I'm an infectious diseases doctor, and today I'm going to be talking with you about healthcare-associated infections. Learning objectives for this module are for you to recognize some of the common risk factors of healthcare-associated infections, for you to be able to list the five most common healthcare-associated infections and their common associated pathogens, Know that pathogens causing healthcare-associated infections are often resistant to many of the commonly used antibiotics, and then understand some of the common strategies used to prevent healthcare-associated infections. So before we start, we'll just take a 30,000-foot uh, view at our bug map <clears throat> and think about where we're going today, thinking about healthcare-associated infections and the likely pathogens. So you can see here two of the more common ones that we see are Staphylococcus, particularly Staphylococcus aureus, and methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. We often frequently see Pseudomonas as well, which is a gram-negative rod. Some other ones that may come up include in back to the gram-positive cocci or Enterococcus, gram-positive rods, Clostridium, specifically Clostridium difficile. Some other gram-negatives you may see are E. coli, Klebsiella, Proteus, Serratia, and Enterobacter. Um, and then in the group of fungi, candida species um, can also be involved in healthcare-associated infections. And you'll hear more about it as we move forward. So a little back, more background about healthcare-associated infections. They're diagnosed in almost 1 in 20 hospitalized patients. So it's actually very common and something you'll absolutely see. It results in significant morbidity and mortality, increased length of hospitalization, and increase in antibiotic use. Um, in the US, reported in 2011 by the CDC, there were over 700,000 healthcare associated infections and resulted in 75,000 deaths in patients. What do healthcare associated infections have in common? Well, predisposing factors are often breakdown of normal barriers. So, very uh, clear example are surgery. Your skin is an outstanding barrier to infection, but when you have surgery, you've opened up uh, a normal defense and may allow bacteria in. Placement of foreign bodies, similarly, um, having blood catheters uh, going through the skin, um, Foley catheters, which we'll talk about, that uh, go into the bladder. Inhibition of normal reflexes, like the cough reflex, gag reflex. So those are really good at preventing bacteria and secretions to go down into your lungs. But when we give medications uh, to, that side effects include um, inhibiting those reflex, increase your risks of lung infections. And then antibiotic use um, increases your risk of some infections all by itself. And then when you have infections, you get these drug-resistant organisms like Staphylococcus aureus, and usually these are methicillin-resistant forms, so MRSA, Pseudomonas, and gram-negative rods, um, and then we talked about Enterococcus and Candida species. Where do they come from? So some of these are from the patient. So many of these patients have been receiving antibiotics, and, these antib and therefore, given that we are 10 to 1 bacteria to human cell, these bacteria that normally live on us and that are part of our normal flora may acquire resistance to antibiotics and then may cause infection. So when they do, they become resistant to a lot of antibiotics. Also from their environment, healthcare workers uh, and other things in the environment may actually carry bacteria um, on that and it may transmit from patient to patient. Clostridium difficile infection is a common example, but there are others. So what are the key infections that we worry about that are healthcare associated? So one of them is pneumonia. Often we talk about ventilator associated pneumonia, but patients in the hospital who are not on ventilators still get pneumonia. Surgical site infections, Clostridium difficile colitis, urinary tract infections, and central cather catheter bloodstream infections. Let's go through these in a little bit more detail. Healthcare associated pneumonia. Risk factors. So intubation, so you've inhibited some of the normal ability of your body to clear out uh, secretions um, when you're intubated and sedated. Uh, patients who are getting other types of sedating medications uh, can inhibit those normal cough and gag reflexes. 
um, and can predispose you to infection. And a low gastric pH allows overgrowth of bacteria in your stomach. So when you do have reflux, there is more bacteria in there and can also predispose you to infection. What is the pathogenesis? For the most part, it is aspiration of contents from your stomach or your mouth into your lungs. So what are the bacteria that make their way down into the lungs? Often Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA, very common, Pseudomonas and other gram-negative rods. And you could say, well, I seem to remember that the bacteria that live in my mouth are like strep species and some anaerobes, and so how come those aren't the ones that are causing pneumonia? Well, what happens is in the hospital setting, your normal flora tends to change, and your mouth may become colonized with gram-negative rods. Uh, your nose may be colonized with staph. And so those are the bacteria that go down and become pathogenic. Uh, the normal oral flora like Virden's group strep tend to not cause pneumonia. How do you make a diagnosis? Well, usually it's a combination of fever, elevated white blood cell count, hypoxia because your lungs are not able to do good uh, gas exchange, and then usually on the x-ray you'll see an infiltrate. How can you prevent it? Studies have shown that if you elevate the head of the bed over 30 degrees, that will prevent aspiration and decrease the risk. And if you have a lot of secretions um, and you're able to drain those, um, you can eliminate some of the aspiration and the likelihood of pneumonia in intubated patients. Surgical site infections. As you can see here, this patient who has a nicely healing wound following surgery, but patients who are obese, diabetic, or immunosuppressed are more likely to develop uh, infection, partially to poor wound healing. Um, usually there is bacteria that are on the patient, but sometimes it can come from other places that make it in through that wound um, to cause infection. The bacteria that you commonly think of causing skin and soft tissue infections like Staphylococcus aureus and beta hemolytic streptococci like strep pyogenes are also the ones that cause infection in the hospital. But when you get the Staphylococcus aureus infection, it tends to be resistant to so MRSA instead of methicillin susceptible. Diagnosis is again clinical erythema you may see, purulent straining from it. And to prevent this, we actually give patients who are having large surgeries perioperative antibiotics right at the time of surgery, and we do an extensive cleaning of the skin at the time of surgery. And those are all very helpful at preventing these types of infections. Clostridium difficile colitis, we talked about as a gram-positive rod. The primary risk factor for this is antibiotic use because normal flora usually inhibits the growth of Clostridium difficile. However, when you get antibiotics and it kills off a lot of the normal flora, it allows Clostridium difficile to uh, proliferate, produce toxin, and cause infection. So as I said, the pathogenesis is the loss of the normal flora. Diagnosis is by testing for antigen and PCR testing for the toxin. And really, prevention is to minimize antibiotic use and do good hand and environmental hygiene so that you prevent spread of this organism from one patient to the other. Urinary tract infections. So risk factor for most hospitalized patients is the placement of a Foley catheter. Um, you often get bacterial overgrowth in stagnant and poorly draining urine, and this is the most common reason. We usually see enteric gram negatives and pseudomonas as being the cause of these types of infections, although you can sometimes think, see other um, things like enterococcus, which are gram positives. Diagnosis, you see white blood cells in the urine, bacteria in the urine, and usually they'll have symptoms. Sometimes it's hard if it's a patient who's unable to tell you those symptoms, and it ends up being a diagnosis of exclusion. To prevent these types of infection, you want to remove Foley catheters and use them only when needed. And Let's finish up with talking about catheter-associated bloodstream infections. So this is when a catheter that goes into a bloodstream allows you to infuse medications uh, into patients that potentially would burn more peripheral veins um, and can last for a long time. Risk factors are the duration and site of the catheter. So longer you have in this catheter, higher risk for infection. And certain sites are higher risk for infection than others. For example, if you had a femoral vein canalized where you have more bacteria, it would be at a higher risk for infection than if you use the subclavian vein. And not surprisingly, immunosuppressed patients are going to be at higher risk than those who are immunocompetent. So usually it's bacteria that are on the skin that, go in, that are able to escape in around the catheter that cause the infection, but occasionally you can actually get bacteremia from other sites that may then deposit on the catheter. So 
Pathogens that are most common are, are bugs that tend to live on the skin, Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis, but we also see Enterococcus and Candida commonly. Diagnosis is made by blood cultures, so drawing blood out of the catheter and sending it to the lab for culture, and when you see bacteria, that's often how we make the diagnosis. How do you prevent? You don't have a catheter in the first place, so remove those catheters as soon as you don't need them using sterile placement um, and caring for the site in a very sterile manner. This is a summary of the different types of infection, the common pathogens, and their key risk factors.